Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hosts Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster are the owners of Elite Online Publishing. They're both Wall Street Journal, USA Today bestselling authors. We're really glad you're here because this podcast was designed for you. Meet industry experts that share their secrets and strategies. Get successful results for your business in money, relationships, health, and your life. Each episode is going to inspire you to take action towards reaching your greatness. Hi, everyone. It's Melanie Johnson. How the heck are you doing today? I'm Good. doing great. <laughs> Good. That's Jen. I knew she was doing great. Well, remember to subscribe to our podcast. We have an awesome podcast again today. We are going to get into some great information. Um, but first, remember, if you're looking to publish a book, reach out to us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Go to our submission form and uh, we'll see if we're a good fit for you. We make all of our authors number one bestsellers and teach them how to leverage their book for their business or their brand. All right, let's get started. Um, imagine spending time working on your business instead of uh, in the business, right? Imagine having a team of A players that can do all the right things for you. Imagine being able to have your business running so great that you're not feeling overwhelmed that you have time for your friends and family. Well, we have an expert that works with companies all the time that gets them to that point, to have a great team, to make sure they're running on top of the business. And oh my gosh, to have free time and enjoy your life. I'm all about that. So welcome, Robert Clinkenbeard. We appreciate you coming today. Oh, and let me say uh, he's an Ironman winner. I think four times Ironman uh, participant. So that's super duper impressive. Thanks for coming, Robert. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you, to, uh, you having me on your show. Well, tell us, Robert, a little bit about yourself and how you got started in this and definitely about how you started the Ironmans. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite a, a long story, but I'll, I'll try and keep it relatively brief. I am, um, you can tell by my accent, I'm uh, not from the US. I uh, was brought up in Edinburgh, Scotland. And, um, you know, one, one year I was just having some challenges at work and just got fed up with the weather in Scotland. I mean, Scotland's a beautiful place, but uh, the weather can get pretty miserable. So one year in particular, I was having a rough year and ended up in in Scottsdale, Arizona, I was in December of 98, and I had an unbelievable time. I mean, there's great weather, it was beautiful and sunny. Uh, I was snowboarding one part of the state, I was skydiving another part of the state, and it was just a tremendous time. And, uh, you know, when I got back to Scotland, I was looking out of my window, and it was raining, and it was miserable, and I was thinking, I was remembering back about my trip, and I was thinking, well, all these people... You know, a lot of these people in Scottsdale were living in beautiful houses. Uh, you know, why is that? What am I doing wrong? Um, and I started doing a little bit of digging, and it was about, um, you know, a lot of people were had either they were entrepreneurs, they had they were business owners, they were uh, chief executives of top, uh, you know, 100 companies. So I thought, well, maybe I need to make a change. Maybe I need to level up. Um, you know, where I'm at in life. So yeah, within you know, probably six months of that trip, I'd moved out to to uh, Scottsdale to Phoenix, Arizona with a couple of suitcases. And uh, you know, here I was walking through Phoenix airport thinking, you know, somebody's going to hand me this golden ticket to become that American dream and uh, move dollars to start a business. And they set me up with the roots and a nice car and everything. But yeah, it didn't, didn't quite happen. So uh, yeah, I started my... Uh, Started my journey in May of uh, '99 and got from there to eventually where I am now, where I've you know I've had a great business with 350 employees. I'm now helping to coach people. I sold my business, and yeah, I just feel very grateful to be able to now be in a position where I can help other business owners, and entrepreneurs. Well, I'm so impressed that you have four times Iron Man. That is not an easy thing. We're only seeing you from the neck up, okay? So I have no idea what's behind all that brute and strength and Scottish, you know, determination to be a four time Iron Man. Um, tell us in your book, you talk about the Iron Man mindset and how that helps in business. Talk us, talk to us about that. Yeah, so, you know, to start my journey about the Iron Man, I, I got to a point where my business was running really well. I had some great people in place business was running really smoothly and I just felt as though I needed some type of challenge so you know I'm, a, I'm an ex uh, football soccer player I used to play a lot of rugby 
and just felt as though my body was being good to break down from all those tackles and hits and everything. So I started doing some running. I then joined a triathlon group, got into doing some triathlons. And I'm, you know, if you actually saw me, you would think that this guy's not an Ironman because I'm not a typical Ironman shape just because of my rugby background. But uh, yeah, I got into doing swimming. I could literally swim one length of the pool and I eventually got a coach to help me out. But it was all those different challenges I went through in terms of either learning how to bike, learning how to swim, you know, being hitting so many different walls that it, it got me into a point where, you know, what, what do I need to do to break through some of those barriers? You know, going back to the whole business question, I mean, we, every day, single day, there's some type of challenge in business, you know, whether it's an employee issue, whether it's a lack of cash, whether it's just, be, you know, all the costs going up these days, are really talking about the increase in costs or maybe lack of material. So every day we're being hit by challenges and it's really just that grit, that determination and really just focusing on seeing on some of the positive things. I'm a big believer in looking back on what you've achieved over the last 24 hours or over the last week, over the last month, or even now, you know, back into 2021 and look at some of those successes. I feel as though not many people look back and measure some of the successes in life. And that's what I talk about and relate between Ironman, between the business side where, yes, I've now done four Ironman, which is great, but you know, what were some of the successes along the way? What are the ways I can celebrate and, and you know get some satisfaction from those to overcome some of those daily challenges that come into my life. I like that. You know, I think a lot of times, especially it's just kind of human nature to just feel like you didn't accomplish things or like, oh, I didn't really get everything done I wanted to get done today. Or, you know, just kind of putting that, putting yourself down instead of actually measuring and saying, what did I accomplish today? And rewarding yourself for those accomplishments or even just acknowledging and saying, I want it this, or I want it that. And, you know, the little things that you did and whether it's the day or the week or the month, I think I fail for sure on remembering the things that I did accomplish. Cause I'm always looking at, Oh, I wish I would have done that. I didn't get that done. You know, <laughs> that kind of a thing. So changes yeah, your you're, mindset. You're almost, beating, you're, you're almost beating yourself up by some of the things the, uh, the see people or uh, other businesses doing around you and almost some, in some ways discourages you. But if you actually measure back and look at some of the wins you've achieved, then it'll get you through some of those challenges. Mm -hmm. How do you create accountability? You know, you talk about that and it, it really is hard to keep yourself accountable. I mean, I've let myself down, you know, today I wanted to get up at, at 6 a.m. And the, all of a sudden I fell back asleep and it was 7.30 and I'm like, <laughs> so I feel like I let myself down, but I don't have anyone to be accountable to. So how do you create accountability um, for your clients? Because that you say it's a big key component. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, certainly with, uh, you know, with my training and with my races, I mean, being part of a group and helping them encourage you to bed in the morning. If, there are, if there's a group of you meeting in the morning, then more likely you're going to get up and join that group. And maybe you're going to run a little bit further than you normally do by yourself. But in business, you know, I like to, you know, have meetings with my clients and I like to give them what some of your, um, your action items over the next uh, 30 days get them to, to write them down, get them to put some deadlines in place, get them, to, it doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily have to be the people that executes on them, but if there's some type of name against that task, then more likely they're going to get that done. And then I'll do such sort of check-in calls with them every, every in between every time I meet them or on a call with them. So that accountability and just keep on that, pre, you know, that gentle pressure on them. I, I see some huge results, you know, when I compare the clients that I meet or, or call every couple of weeks compared to the ones I meet every quarter, I mean, the difference is, is startling. When you get that accountability, you also get uh, confidence along the way because you feel like you've accomplished and you've stayed on task. You haven't let yourself or other people down with that. What about um, how do you create a vision? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, vision is, you know, it's definitely been challenging over the last couple of years because a lot of people were really big into five, 10, 15 years out, but we've had so many challenges with, you know, with COVID, with, you know, the labor market and everything. So, you know, I'm trying to encourage a lot of my clients to just maybe look at one year or maybe three years out and then start to work back and do that 90 day plan. So what, what is, you know, yes, it's nice to have a beehive. Where are you going to be in 15 years? Is it going to be some type of an exit? Is it good? That exit could be just the business is running independent of you and maybe somebody else is running it. So you're able to go off and spend time with your families, you know, maybe work on other businesses, but uh, have some type of, you know, overreaching goal that's maybe 10 or 15 years out. And then what's that roadmap between now and those 10 or 15 years and try and break it down to have something that's, you know, inspiring to you and inspiring you to your team that they actually follow you towards that vision. I think I get, I hear a lot of complaints about, you know, millennials that they're not hardworking or not, um, you know, they don't necessarily have the same work ethic, but I said, well, what's your vision look like? How are you inspiring those people? What are the things you're doing on a daily, weekly basis to help, you know, show them the path of success? And you know, once they get into that and really uh, trying to get something that's, um, that millennials can relate to, then they have a lot more success. Yeah, that's for sure. If you have a goal and even a group goal, um, or a personal goal, it's a lot easier to get things done if you have something to, to look forward to. So tell us a little bit about, um, I think on your website, it mentioned stuff about, you know, a lot of times, especially in today's world, <laughs> we can get kind of depressed or sad by reading the news, um, or even just like not work as, as hard or not work as much, or even just like being kind of in a you know, kind of a plain blah state because of what you heard on the news. How do you get out of that? Or do you just not read the news? Or how do you, what do you advise on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I definitely encourage people to be aware of current affairs, but I don't necessarily, I try to encourage to people to you know, enjoy things like books, like podcasts, you know, things that are positive in your life. Uh, you know, go and work out, release some of that tension from you and, and figure out ways on how you can try and improve your life. I mean, you know, I, I, a lot of my clients now I'm encouraging to use a lot more of, um, you know, fractional solutions, you know, like virtual assistants or other solutions around the world now. So, you know, take advantage of some of those other things that have become more apparent during covid and look at ways in how you can make your life, you know, do an exercise that, that figures out either what makes you stressful or consumes your time and then figure out, you know, what, what's one type of solution that you could try and improve upon that. Um, you know, one of the things I do with, uh, you know, my family is I do actually a, a vision board with them. I have young kids, I have seven-year-olds, I have a 10-year-old, and I'll do a vision board with them. And it's just, you know, a lot of them have fun stuff on it, like going to Disney, like going to, you know, they want another pet or maybe some type of a beach trip or something. But it's just going through that exercise or some of that positivity, something that they could work towards. And a lot of them are challenging me about, you know, I, I traveled a lot last year. So they're challenging me about, well, maybe you could travel a little bit less. You could spend more time with us and doing some trips. So I think all those types of things just help to create that positivity and and deflect to be some of the negative stuff we see in social media or, or the news. Yeah, I love the vision board when you say, you know, look at it every day. When you're looking at it every day, it's compelling you for your future. Um, you talk about how to uh, cultivate your business growth through personal growth. How are those two things tied together? I, I, I firmly believe that it is really tough for a leader, a CEO in a company to be able to effectively lead his team without him or her knowing what their vision is. What, what do they want in life? What's their, how are they going to make an impact in life? If they don't know where they're going, what their roadmap is, how, how can they expect others to follow them and to be able to inspire others? So I really work on... Yes, I mean, CEOs you know, want me to come in and improve their business, with more growth, more revenue, more profits. But at the same time, I actually work 
really closely with the CEOs to make sure, okay, where, what does your journey look like? What do you want in, in life personally? Are you spending enough time with, with family, with friends? And I go through a series of exercises. I'll give you a great example where, you know, a really successful CEO uh, within South Carolina, you know, the really successful business, really profitable, doing probably 25 million a year, eight employees. You know, it would seem like that would be a dream dream position, but he was just really unhappy and not spending enough time with his family and just felt really dissatisfied. So over a period of six to 12 months, we, we got somebody else to have effectively run the business. And now he's able to, you know, work three days a week. He's, you know, every single month he's going away with some type of family trip. Um, and he's just a lot happier person because we went through that, that personal journey, those personal exercises. So I think it's really important that whoever's leading the company has some type of, uh, you know, find out their purpose in life. Mm -hmm. It's really good to narrow that down your purpose and and the vision board and the setting the goals. That's all really good. I know this year we're working on the one word where you just focus on one word for the year. And that's been fun to, to do something like that. And I think when someone, you know, when the leader of the company is in a good place personally, they're feeling confident, they're feeling secure, then that transcends to the whole business um, Mm -hmm. that you can have that. Are there any other, I mean, you've got the vision board. Is there any ways, other tricks that you tell someone to have personal growth or to keep going forward with that? I mean, I love that you did Ironman. Is it exercise? Is it doing personal development? Is What are some of the other things that you guide them to do? Yeah, I mean, every day, I mean, one of the things I do personally is I, I have my, my planner and every day I'm setting, you know, three goals all around, um, you know, my, my health, you know, my fitness, around my wealth, how to improve that, and my relationships. And every day, single day, I'm focusing on trying to achieve those things. So, and, and including that, you know, I, I have a personal goal, part of my wealth, side is to spend 20, 30 minutes on personal development. And that could be reading a chapter or it might be taking a course or it might be even a, a YouTube speaker um, or podcast, but some type of way just to, again, sharpen the saw, just to improve yourself uh, personally. But every single day, I, I religiously look at my goals for the day and have a checklist of some of the things I'm, I'm, you know wanted to achieve. And then I'll, I'll look back at the end of the day and, you know, I'm, I'm usually pretty happy if I achieve 80 plus percent of those things. But uh, it really it, it's really easy to get caught up in minutia, in, in your inbox and all this other noise going around you. Whereas if you have something in front of you, just that, that planner to keep you focused, then more likely you're going to achieve more. Yes, I like that. That's definitely true. You mentioned podcast. Now you have your own podcast. What's the title of your podcast? I have a commercial landscaper podcast. So, you know, my background is the, um, the landscape industry, but uh, I bring on a lot of business owners from around the world who have great stories to tell about, you know, successes in their business and, you know, failures and exits. Um, you know, I had a guest on a couple of weeks ago who just sold his $75 million plumbing company and just talked about how he aligned his whole team around the vision, successful exit, and just a really inspiring story that, again, my hope is to try and inspire all different business owners out there to try and come up with that vision, can try and come up with a plan and get everybody aligned behind that plan. Mm-hmm. Well, and you also talk about guiding executives to build a roadmap for sustainable profits. Um, you know, that's always a big hurdle for a lot of people is creating that sustainable profitability. How do you uh, help them do that? I, I, I believe that very few companies I, I go in and help typically have a budget in place. And it just it completely you know, blows me away that why why have a budget in place? And then let's work on a budget and let's work from the bottom up, meaning that let's put in that that goal, that 10, 12, 15% in first and work upwards. A lot of people start from the top and put in revenue and then they see what they end up with and then they start and chop and cut and have tough conversations. Why not start start from the bottom up? 
get that profitability in there first and make sure there's enough money to be able to give to employees or charitable or sustainability. Um, but yeah, let's let's try and work on that. We are, we're all in business to make money. And I think a lot of people just get disappointed when they look at you know the middle of January and they think, oh, I've not made any money or I've only made two or three percent. And it's just very demoralizing. So um, I'm always trying to get people to to lock in a budget, monitor on a weekly basis, make the adjustments throughout the year so that you know it gets really close to becoming your target. Mm-hmm. Well, tell us where people can go to find you, Robert, and to get more information. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a, a website, the Radix Group, LLC.com. It's got a lot of information about me, my company, all the coaching different practices. Uh, I'm also fairly active on LinkedIn. So yeah, I'd be happy to, to help people out. If people want to learn about coaching or my book and some of the practices, we'd love to, love to help them. That's great. Well, we'll put that URL up at the bottom, the Radix Group, LLC.com. And we'll put it in our show notes as well. And people can go and get your books and find out more information about you. Thanks for coming, Robert. Really appreciate having you here. Um, Remember to subscribe to our podcast um, and share it with your friends. Yeah, thanks, Robert. And uh, and if you're looking to write a book and publish a book, reach out to us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. And remember, we're always here to educate, inspire, and motivate you. And if you have suggestions for us for a guest or something that you'd, a topic you'd like to hear, let us know. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, ladies. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility, and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, an innovative publishing and full-spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at EliteOnlinePublishing.com today All of their authors become number one bestsellers.